everybody. <laughs> Cracking open it cold one for this and by a cold one i mean Lacroix. i'm on a sparkling water kick right now i couldn't tell you why it just soothes me <laughs> hey guys what's up welcome back to my channel today we're gonna be doing a little girl talk q a i actually posted a story probably about a month ago now asking for you guys to ask me like tmi questions girl talk questions and just about more taboo topics i guess for girls and I never got around to filming it, but I was productive and I screenshotted like a ton of the responses so that when I had time to film the video and was ready, then we would be locked and loaded. I'm really pumped to do this. I'm just gonna be answering all kinds of questions. I looked at some of them. A lot of them I haven't looked at yet, so it's just gonna be like a very candid conversation, but you guys seem to really enjoy when I get super real on camera and talk about things that maybe people don't always talk about. And I'm trying to slowly get better and better at that. So I hope you guys enjoy. I'm in a good mood. I just got ready. Um, and I just, I'm like, I never was one to say my favorite color is blue. It's always been like yellow, sometimes red, but like mainly yellow. And I, I'm like loving this cobalt blue color. I'll link this shirt down below. It's only like 38 bucks um, from Revolve. It's from the Super Down brand, which I find to be a little bit less expensive, which appreciate. So I'll link it down below if it's still available because it's such a fun little winter to spring transition shirt. Anyways, without further ado, I'm just gonna answer some questions. We're just gonna chat. If you like this video and you want more videos like it, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're new. Um, be cool to hit 600,000 subscribers. That'd be fun, right? First question, all right. <laughs> what type of birth control are you on? Here's here's my guy. Um, yeah, it's called Sprintec. Um, I know some other of my friends are on this. I used to be on Yaz and then we switched because I don't know. I like got my period for a month and a half and that was not fun. Um, so she switched me to Sprint Tech and then it it went away and it was not a problem. Or I took like some hormone pills for like a week or so and the birth control and it got itself all fixed. So yeah, I'm on Sprint Tech now. Actually a little story on why I started birth control. I feel like a lot of people start it for all different types of reasons. I actually started it because I went on Accutane my senior year of high school. Um, it was hell, needless to say, but it did clear up my skin. And I, I think it definitely helped in the long run, but it sucked. But you, my dermatologist required where you had to be on birth control in order to take Accutane and take like pregnancy tests every month. Because apparently if you take Accutane when you're pregnant, it's like major birth defects. So they just want to make sure. Whereas I know some of my friends, they were able to just like pledge abstinence and agree to not get pregnant <laughs> but my dermatologist was like you're going on breast control and so i just never got off of it and then my derma and then my gynecologist was like i don't think you should get off of it you'll notice a difference in your skin because i know that's why you initially got on it so yeah long story short yeah i'm pretty happy with it do you ever get jealous in a relationship and how do you deal with it i don't get super jealous in my relationship and i think it's just because i feel so so just secure for i mean and that's because we've been dating for two years we live in a college town and like he's basically had so many opportunities where like i could be worried but i never was because he never gave he's never given me a reason to worry and i feel like that's why um I've just never worried. Like if he, if someone's starting to give you a reason to worry, then that just really sucks. But he's never given me an ounce of a reason to feel nervous, feel scared. He's such good friends with all my friends. And sometimes he hangs out with my friends and I'm not with them. And I don't know, I feel okay with it. I feel comfortable and I love how he's so okay with like me having my own guy friends and stuff. And it's just a very healthy thing. I think as soon as you start to try and control or, you know, express worry to them it like subconsciously gets in their head I feel like and then things change a little bit I've noticed with like other friends relationships that I've just seen I'm not saying that's for everybody but I've just noticed if you are comfortable and there's no reason to worry then you're so good and perk and a con um he's like never on his phone so I'm not necessarily worried about him like texting other girls or anything because I he could barely text me and his mom back <laughs> We have each other's passcodes to our phone. Not that I'm like over here on his phone, but like if my phone's sitting there, I'm not like worried about any sort of text that's gonna pop up vice versa for him. It's just a very open relationship. So I feel like with that, like I have no reason to worry. There have been times like we were on spring break last year or just other times when like there's a pretty girl like talking to him. I'm like, oh my gosh, what if she doesn't know he's a girl? Like I, yeah, I get like jealous just like anyone else, but I'm not worried if that makes sense. How old were you? 
I was 18. What are your top five that time of the month needs? Great, great question. So I actually never cramped until I started birth control. I never knew what period cramps were. And then I started birth control and I, I knew what it felt like immediately. I only get them like the first two days, but it is tough. You just want to sit. Um, I think the biggest thing is I just cancel everything. Like that for that second day. Second day is usually the worst for me is I just know my body. I know myself and I'll just kind of take a gel pill and like lay in bed. I'll literally sit in child's pose or not child's. Yeah, I think it's child's pose like this and just make myself feel comfortable. And then I also have like a heat pack. Obviously heat packs feel really good. Um, you know, one that you put in the microwave that smell like eucalyptus or lavender. You can buy them. They're like aromatherapy beaded heat packs. I, I'll literally put it like honestly on my crotch, my crotch and like lower uterus area and I'll just hold it there. Baths I love, but as for like products, there's nothing crazy. Um, just kind of patience with myself and being like, it's okay like to feel this way. What do you think of people judging people in their 20s who have never had their first kiss, never had a boyfriend or girlfriend or sex? Some of my very best friends have still never had a boyfriend or a girlfriend and I don't know why there's such a stigma around it. I mean, I get it, you know, you see all your friends maybe like get into relationships or have their first kiss, whatever, but I am truly on that train where everyone is on their own path. Cause you gotta have high standards, you know? Like you are an awesome person and I don't think it's, a bad thing to just wait until you find that person that just makes your heart flutter and gives you the butterflies and it really makes it like 10 times more worth and I think just when you remind yourself like there's not even anyone right now that I want to date I'm not saying that that's always the case but I found that for me when I was single I was like well Danielle is there anyone you even like want to date right now and I'm like well no I mean yeah there's people I found attractive but it wasn't even you know, someone I talk to I just like to think about it like that and I just truly believe everyone's kind of on their own journey like if you're not in a relationship at the time or you haven't had your first kiss, like there's other things that you have to experience before that. There's some self-love that needs to be kind of instilled in you first. How would you explain a good routine of shaving down there and shaving in general? I don't know. I've heard a lot of people love the Billy razor and apparently ever since some of my friends started using the Billy razor, they haven't experienced like those bikini bumps. I don't believe it because I have never shaved and like not had razor bumps. The only time is if I got like a Brazilian or a bikini wax, which is what I do if I like know I'm gonna be in a bathing suit like multiple days in a row. I am like so honestly like TMI, but I've always been so self-conscious about that situation because it's so hard in being a girl. I feel like we have to, we feel like we have to be this like naked mole rat. <laughs> and um, I, I love that it's getting normalized obviously more and more to not. It's also just frustrating as hard because everyone has different body types and genetics. My leg hair grows so fast and it's just frustrating sometimes, but sometimes I just learn to love it and be like, you know, I shaved this morning. That is the best I can do. Um, so unfortunately I don't have tips. Sometimes I'll use conditioner instead of like shaving cream or if I don't have shaving cream. So I'll like buy shaving cream every couple months and I'm like, wow, I have my life together. I have shaving cream. And then I run out and then I just like use whatever's in my shower. So if you guys have any tips, please let me know. I haven't found that perfect. I try to exfoliate my skin down there. Um, every now and then when I can, just cause I think it helps, but it's just it, during the summer, especially it's, it's hard. How the heck do you flirt? Sincerely awkward girl. <laughs> I am so awkward. You guys like once I get to know a guy, I'm like so chill and like all my guy friends, I feel so comfortable with sophomore year before I met Ryan, when I was like mingling, I just, <laughs> I don't know. I w I'm not going to say I'm awkward. Like, but I just feel like, I don't know, maybe it was just my situation. Like everyone knew me as the YouTube girl. So I already felt like I was like kind of, I don't know. I didn't feel smooth enough to be like, hey, what's up? Like, how are you? Like, I've just never, I've never felt like that hot girl. Everyone's hot. Everyone's beautiful. But you know, those girls that just, they just know they're just like the shit. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. I just feel like some girls just like, it's just confidence. They just feel confident in themselves. They can look however they want, but if they have that confidence, that attitude of like, I can get any guy, any girl I want, like it just works in their favor. And for me, that just wasn't the case. Um, I was just very, like as soon as I started talking to a guy, I immediately was just like, I'm his friend. Like I'm a friend zone. I just like didn't even, I feel like so you have to kind of go into it with this mindset of like, I know who I am. I'm confident in myself. Fake it till you make it, honestly. And don't go into it like, oh my gosh, he's out of my league, whatever it may be. 
because I feel like that's how it went with Ryan. I was just like doing my thing. I was having my day. I was in a good mood. I was feeling myself and he came over and I was like, hey, what's up? Like, oh, you want my number? And eh, now here's my Snapchat. That's literally what I did. And I feel like it's just, they're like, whoa. I just think when you fake it till you make it, it helps. Um, but other than that, I don't really have any tips because I'm actually kind of awkward too. How to make new friends when everyone else seems to already have their group set. Okay, I feel this. So in high school, I had definitely my friend groups, but coming to college, um, I had nobody. I knew some people that went here. Obviously Brooke was here, but she was a junior. Uh, I wasn't gonna hang out with her friends all the time. I was traveling a lot freshman year for YouTube stuff, which I'm so thankful it was literally so much fun. But with that, I lost a lot of those first weeks of, you know, getting to know girls in my sorority and getting to know, I don't know, it was just, I missed out on some things and I regret it a little bit, but also you can't go back in time. So, so come, you know, second semester, freshman year, early sophomore year, I was like, shoot, you know, I, I had a couple friends, but everyone seemed to already have their friend group or so I thought. And then the more and more I talked to people, I realized, you know, friend groups typically, at least here at UGA, get set like second semester, sophomore year, and they still change. And it, it switches based off of who you live with. And if you like move and if you have certain people in your major or who your hobbies and likes are with. I think a big step is like, let's say you transfer, find that one person, maybe two people that you really vibe with and hang out with them one-on-one. -on -one, and then slowly they'll kind of start inviting you to hang out with their friends. And then you kind of just, you have to infuse yourself. You have to force yourself to do things that you might not necessarily want to do at first because there's just, it's just small talk and it sucks, but that's just kind of always how, you know, most friendships start is just getting to know people and you might feel uncomfortable at first. There might be inside jokes that you don't know, but I feel like the more and more you show like your dedication to like that person's friendship, they'll be like, Hey guys, this is Annabelle. She's literally so cool. And she just transferred. And I'm not saying everyone's that nice, but I don't know. I think it's possible. So yeah, I think just getting to know one person in a friend group that maybe you're interested in and then kind of going from there. And maybe that friend group's not for you, but give it a shot. That's what kind of happened with me with Delaney. We became really good friends and obviously she wasn't traveling every weekend for YouTube stuff. She lived in the sorority house and I didn't. I lived alone sophomore year because I just thought it would be a lot with like filming YouTube videos and stuff. And honestly, I kind of regret that a little too, but also I loved living alone for that year. It was kind of fun. But anyway, so she made friends with a lot of girls that were living in the house. So I'd go over there and hang out with them all the time. And then I got to know this like friend group that Delaney had kind of made living in the house. And, but if it weren't for Delaney, I don't know if I would like have necessarily connected with those girls. So it's kind of cool how it all happens like that. How do you edit your pics lately slash do you facetune? I do not facetune. There have been times I have facetuned like wrinkles in my shirt or, and I have facetuned in the past. Like when I was younger, a hundred percent, I would like smooth the heck out of my face whiten the teeth oh my god of course now i'm kind of on this no edit vibe where i'll edit it i'll put it in the tezza app and i'll add some contrast take down the highlights basically just make it more colorful and vibrant but i actually don't add filters anymore which is so crazy because i used to be like filter queen definitely like have always used filters and i loved them and then i just realized like the world's so beautiful without the filters sometimes the filters would make trees like not look green and my hair looks so much blonder than it was i think it's just kind of me on my self-love journey if you will and just kind of being more and more okay with just the real photo and you don't have to worry about a feed you know you don't have to worry about a theme because you're just posting photos, you know? This is a weird question, but do you get drunk? I feel like you're a grandma. <laughs> fair, fair question. <laughs> I am a bit of a grandma. If you watch our truth or drink, Delaney and I's like way of drinking was like taking a sip of our drink if we didn't want to answer instead of taking a shot. I'm a lightweight, but also I drink really slow. So like I, a lot of times we'll just not get drunk. I'm like that one person that just doesn't, like I'm like a little tipsy, woo, or or I'm like a really lightweight and I'm like super drunk. But I've never, I've only like gotten like really, really drunk where I, it was bad like twice in my life. I'm just someone like once I hit my limit, I'm like having fun, I just literally stop. Whereas I feel like most people are just like, let me keep drinking. I don't know why my mind is just like, oh, Danielle, no, it's like, let's stop now, you're having fun. But then I like immediately decline and then I'm like, I need water, I need food, I need to go to bed. <laughs> so pros and cons, um, but I do get drunk. I actually really enjoy fireball shots. Fireball was like my thing in high school and then I stopped. Fun fact, I chase my fireball shots with baby carrots. It's like a thing, it's a tradition, like 
my friends know it's just what I do. I'll like send them Snapchats of me like, okay. <laughs> so I don't know why, I think it's just the baby carrots like freshen up my senses. Like it's just like cleaning the palette after. <laughs> I don't really know. But yeah, that's why I like don't like want to take fireball shots unless I'm in my home because I don't have carrots, so. Hey guys, I hope this video was enjoyable and I'm so happy to do a part two, a part three if there's questions that, and obviously these are like five slides that I screenshotted from my responses from a while ago. So I'm sure there's so many more, but I'm still glad I got to do this. Um, but yeah, I love you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed. Definitely let me know if you want to do me to do this again. I 100% will. And yeah, I hope you're all having an amazing day. Hope everything's going well. And I will see you guys very soon for next video.